over here. And how about, is that yellow or, or peach? Somebody with a, yeah, right there, the, the blonde in there. Go ahead over here. Uh, you took an oath to protect and defend the Constitution. I would like to know where in the Constitution you have the authority to be, even be had in this discussion. I get that question a um, the, okay, so, no, 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 no. So the question, and I get this slide. How is this constitutional? Our job in Congress, you know, we literally swear to protect and defend the Constitution. So is this constitutional? What, um, what lots of constitutional scholars will tell you is under the general welfare clause, this is constitutional. Now, here's what will determine the answer to your question. This will have to go under the law first, then it will be challenged. How this bill, I think, will be challenged, and a lot of constitutional scholars are having this big debate, will be under whether or not the government has the right to ration our health care benefits. Whether or not the government has the right to say, when you're elderly, whether you, you're allowed to have that hip replacement, whether you're ha allowed to have that cataract surgery, whatever the case may be, that is where I think a court challenge will occur, and where the constitutionality of this will be tested as to whether or not it protects our rights or not. There is something in this bill called severability. It's a clause that goes into legislation all the time. Severability is that if one piece of this legislation is deemed unconstitutional, it does not deem the rest of the legislation unconstitutional. That piece in and of itself falls out, if the court knocks it down, the rest continues on. They put that in the bill for the whole concern and purpose that some of it perhaps might be deemed unconstitutional down the road. The only answer you're, the only so, the only way you'll find out an answer to that question is for the Supreme Court to, to, to weigh in on it, or lower courts, after the bill has been implemented. But the answer you get to that question, because I've asked that question, is the General Welfare Clause. They give you a specific answer. Yeah. Over here, then, how about a hands up over on this side? How about the gentleman in the middle there? You know, say, yeah, the guy who was born on top of his head. I'm sorry, I, I just can't see that. Thank you. Pay for all of the costs of that illness. Put it another way, like this. 
8% of the under 65 population are people in this category, the uninsurable or the prohibitively high expensive people. People with breast cancer eight years ago, or type 2 diabetes, something like that. 92% of the population is otherwise pretty well insured or insurable. Make sure that you have the subsidies kick in for that 8% of the population so that when they get sick or if they are already sick, that means that that insurance pool will not have to bear the full cost of that coverage and that makes everybody else's insurance a lot more cheaper and it makes it much more competitive. So target the subsidies to that pool of population and the way I do it in my bill is I say to the insurance companies, if you cherry pick, just pick healthy people, you're assessed a penalty. If you insure unhealthy people, keep them healthy, have disease management, you get money from those cherry pickers. So you set up the incentives so that the incentive structure for insurance companies, it works pretty well in Switzerland, there are other ways of doing this. The incentive for insurance companies is to give you a longer lasting insurance contract. Right now, your insurance is one year, then you have to renegotiate again. Longer lasting insurance, like 5, 10, 20 years. And the incentive is to keep you healthy, to keep your management of your disease under control. That, to me, is a far better way to organize our insurance laws and our insurance systems so that their interests jive with our interests. And you can do this without having the government run the whole thing, with having a private system, but more importantly, where we as consumers have more power. To me, the basic thing comes down to this. Where do you give the power? Do you give the power to the government, or do you give the power to the patient, to the consumer? I want to give the power to the patient by giving them the money they need to be able to afford health insurance, equalizing the tax treatment of health care, make sure that your benefit is portable so it goes with you from job to job or if you lose your job, and give people power with respect to insurance companies so the insurance company can rank up their rates when they get sick or drop them when they get sick. That, to me, is a better way of organizing the system as opposed to having this bill, which basically has the government take it over. Um,